If you know about the arc length formula in calculus, a great way that you can expand upon that is to use it to find the surface area of an object when it's been revolved about an axis. So in this problem, we're going to look at the object created by the function fx equals 2 fifths x uh, as it goes from 0 to 5, and we're going to revolve that about the x-axis. Then we're going to use that formula to figure out what the surface area is. So in case you don't remember what that formula is, let's go ahead and start by writing it down. So we're going to look at our integral from a to b, 2 pi multiplied by the function, and all this will be multiplied by 1 plus derivative of our function, all of that squared, dx. So as you can see, here's that square root part, which comes directly from the arc length formula that you've probably seen before. All right, so we're going to take our pieces and see if we can plug them in. Our bounds, a and b, will represent where our curve is starting and stopping, so from 0 to 5. The function, our 2 fifths x, will go nicely into there. It looks like we'll have to do a little bit of work finding its derivative and hopefully simplifying that part. Let's get to work. So our function is simply 2 fifths x. The derivative of this function then is pretty nice, 2 fifths. Now we're going to have to square that and put it underneath our square root. So let's work on simplifying that as much as possible right now. So I'll take 1 plus the value of my derivative. All of that will be squared. Let's see, what does this turn out to be? So 2 squared gives me a 4. 5 squared gives me a 25. And let's see, combining these two things, this would be 25, 25, plus 4, 20 fifths. So it looks like I get 29, 20 fifths. And this is the piece that will live underneath that square root. All right, so now that we know this portion, let's go ahead and start plugging in the rest of our pieces and get our integral. So as I mentioned earlier, let's start with the bounds. Our curve goes from 0 up to 5. Then we have our 2 pi. And we'll multiply this by our function. 2 fifths x. All right, now we have our arc length. So there's that big square root piece. And all of the work we did before is so I can put in that 29 all over 20 fifths. Saves us a lot of trouble later on. dx, and we're good. So now we just evaluate this uh, integral, and that will give us our surface area. Let's see what we can simplify so far. So I could combine my coefficients out here and go ahead and move them outside of my integral. That will definitely make things much easier. So this will give me a 4 pi all over 5. Still working on these bounds here, so 0 to 5. I got an x in there. Let's see, and with that square root, I could take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. All right, looking good. Looks like I have another constant that I can go ahead and move out front. Let's go ahead and do that. So this will be 4 pi square root of 29. And when I move this 5, it'll combine with the other one, 25. Multiplied by our integral from 0 to 5 of x dx. Okay, so things are definitely looking pretty good. Uh, my coefficient out front is looking kind of ugly, but no worries. We're just really worried now on taking care of our integral. All right, let's work with that. So the antiderivative of x, we would add 1 to the power, giving us an x squared, and dividing by that new power. So we'll evaluate this using our bounds from 5 until 0. And of course, out front of all of this is still our 4 pi, our square root of 29, 
and or 25. We'll get to that guy in just a bit. Uh, looking at evaluating this, so I'd plug in the 5, and we'd end up plugging in the 0. Don't forget our coefficient out front. And we'll continue on. So let's see. This guy will just be a zero. No need to worry about that. Looks like I'll have 25 over 2 for that. 4 pi square root of 29 all over 25. So this is essentially being multiplied by 25 all over 2. Well, I can see some things I can definitely simplify. Let's go ahead and do that, such as canceling out these 25s. We'll cancel out a 2 from the 4 and get our final answer. So the surface area of this particular function when we rotate it looks like it's 2 pi square root of 29. So be careful when using the surface area formula. Take note that it has the arc length formula with that square root underneath there. And be careful when simplifying. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.